Hello and welcome back to the Ultimate Beginner's Guide for City Skylines 2. So, you've just started your first city and are getting a handle on how all the new tools work in City Skylines 2. But even though your city is starting to look great, you probably have one significant problem. You're rapidly losing money each and every month. And if you don't do something quickly, your city's going to go bankrupt. Thankfully, it's not all that difficult to resolve this issue if you do three key things that I'm going to talk about in this video. So I'm going to show you just how you can take a budget that's bleeding money and transform it into one that is sustainably producing surpluses. And I'm going to do this by continuing to build the city of Tutoria. That's right, I've heard your suggestions and we renamed the city. And if you missed the previous episode where we founded the city and went over the basic mechanics, a link to the series playlist will be in the video description and I'll link to it above. And if you're excited to finally make some money in City Skylines 2, hit the like button. And if you're already a financial wizard, hit the like button for that too, and let me know how things are going for you down in the comments. Or if you're feeling bashful, just leave an emoji that represents your city's budget for the sake of engagement. And without any further ado, let's jump right in. Before we attempt to fix our budget, let's baseline things. And if you want to access your budget, you click on your bank balance. And if you hover over it before you click on it, you get to see your current trend. We're losing 4,500 per month. That's not great. Going into our economy menu, you can see your revenues and expenses in the budget tab at a general level and broken down into specific categories. So for our revenues, we're generating about 228,000 per month and most of that money is coming from government subsidies. This is something that you'll get in the very beginning of the game, which will help to kind of balance your budget or get it closer to balanced as you begin to build your city. So the taxes are the taxes that you're going to collect from all of the different zoning categories that you have. The service fees are all the fees that you collect for providing services to your citizens. You can see that you can collect service fees from parking, electricity, water, garbage, healthcare, education, and public transit. And these are pretty modest right now and will grow over time. And then the one thing that we're not collecting revenue from at all is service trade. And that'll probably be something we want to fix in the near future. Moving on to our expenses, they are about 338000 per month. So this is broken out into subsidies, service upkeeps, service trade, and loan interest. The subsidies are things that you can provide specific citizens or business categories to encourage them to move into your city. So this is kind of a negative tax rate. And if you do that, this would be shown here. The next one is your service upkeeps and it's our biggest category. These are all the services that you're providing your citizens. If you click on the services tab, you can see them all broken out individually. And you could adjust them through here if you wanted to. You can see that right now, our biggest expense is healthcare and death care, followed closely by education and research. So you could certainly adjust these if you wanted to. I think we're gonna hold off on that for now and see if we can balance things out by generating more revenue. Moving back to our budget tab, we have our service trade. And right now we're spending $23,000 per month to import electricity. So that is why we have our expense here. And then finally we have our loan interest. And we don't have any loans right now, so we don't have any interest payments. But if we did take out a loan, this is where you would see that. And that results in a monthly deficit of $111,000 per month. So this is what we are trying to resolve through the end of this episode. And now that we baseline things, let's take our first step towards resolving this, producing our utilities locally. Considering that service trade is such a small part of our overall expense picture, you might be surprised that we're starting here. We're only spending about $22,000 per month per power, and we're even able to offset that with our service fee collection, collecting about $6,100 per month from our residents. But you have to take this picture into a more broad scope. And when you look at what we're actually importing, it's 4.5 megawatts of power per month. So that's actually very, very expensive. It's about $3,400 per megawatt per month. And we are missing out on the opportunity to completely offset our electricity consumption by selling it to the outside world. We have the exact same problem with our water and sewage. We actually can't import sewage just to dump it into our water bodies, but we could be selling our water if we were able to connect to the outside world. So this is something that we are going to need to rectify and rectify it quickly. In the previous episode, I mentioned a desire to have geothermal on this map, and I thought that maybe this is the right location for it, but I'm starting to reconsider that just a little bit. The main reason is our air pollution. If we look at these arrows right here, we can see that we're already sending a bit of pollution across the water, and while we can get away with some of that, if we were to add a geothermal power plant here, I think that could tip the scales towards it being just a little bit too much. Let's purchase our geothermal power plant in our development tree by purchasing our battery station first, and then our geothermal power plant, and then we'll take a look at how bad things are. You can see it generates medium air pollution, and I think it's also way too big to put right here. So there's a lot of reasons why this isn't the ideal location for this. So we're gonna go back to the drawing board. 
and I've been looking at a couple of locations that I think could be really good for us. This one right here appears to be a fairly decent location. It's relatively close to our downtown and it would send our air pollution off this way. The other location I think could be even better is right here. It's kind of a little ways away from our map, but it would give us the opportunity to create an interchange with the highway on this side and de cul de sac our little city. Also, the air pollution would completely miss our community. To really figure out the ideal location though, I need to look at our natural resources as well. Right here, nothing. And over there, which is where that water was, we actually have a bunch of fertile land. So I don't wanna pollute this by adding our power plant over here. So I think we know which route we need to take. So let's purchase some tiles. And to make sure that we're purchasing the correct tiles, I'm gonna click on water pollution while we're in our map tile viewer. And I'll purchase this one, this one, this one, and probably this one as well, so that we can make our connection across the highway. And now we just need to make our way over here. And to do that, I think we're gonna build out our grid just a bit further and then find the shortest route that we can across the river, which is going to be a fairly long bridge considering this is a fairly wide span right here. So let's start right about here. And I have an idea on how to rotate our grid just a bit. I wanna follow the back of the stadium right here and line up right here with this road. So we'll clip onto the side of this building and then line up right here. And then I want to take this road right here and connect it right about here. The reason I want to do this is I'm going to reorient the grid from this intersection. And right here, I can see that I am perfectly in the center of the intersection. I can see that because of all of the different lines. And I'll come up my 112 and down my 188. Now, it looks like this broke up and that's because the zoning is faced on the wrong road. If I delete this and add this back, it's going to completely fix that grid. Now, I don't want to break the rest of this, so I'm going to turn off Snap to Guidelines, which will make it more difficult to make this grid. However, it will be much more precise. I will likely need to redo this road, though, because the grid is focused on the wrong road. I went a little bit further than I had to, and I added this extra road. I'm thinking that at some point we'll make this a couplet, and this will be a very important local road as opposed to this main drag that we're adding. That's going to be an important regional facility at some point in the near future. For now, though, I want to join these two grids up, and we'll use our simple curve tool to do that. That's as simple as having our 90 here. We'll need to re-enable snap to guidelines. And then I want to upgrade this road. This will become Birch Street. We're going to get rid of snap to zoning cell length, and then we'll use our replace tool to line this up right in the center. And we could drag along this whole path, but uh, it's just as easy to upgrade one at a time. Now we'll use our simple curve tool, right mouse click to get out of that snapping that we just had. And then as we snap to the center, I wanna make sure we square it up perfectly. And then we'll perfectly upgrade that. That is a nice connection right there. The next part of this is actually lining this up right here. I got to turn the contours on because we are in the medium roads tool. But now that we have that enabled, I just need to find the shortest span I can across the river. I'm thinking I want to be right about here, but I want to go straight. So I'm going to level a pad here. I'll shrink this brush size up, right mouse click here and pull this on over. And then I'm going to go across the river. I want to see exactly where this would be. And I added a bit of a jog here so I could straighten up the bridge across the river. And then I do want to upgrade this. We'll take the four lane tied arch bridge and then we'll replace the two bridge spans that we have here. And then I'll try to fix the monstrosity that I created right here. The unfortunate thing is there is no undo tool to fix this. So if you make a terrain mistake like I just did, you're just going to have to get proficient at fixing your mistakes. And in this case, it's coming in with a small brush size and a low brush strength and just attempting to smooth things out. Like I always say when you're working with the terrain, just go slow, go slow. There's no need to speed along. And I think that we're gonna try to go over the top of the highway. The highway already exists. And in reality, I think that that would be the path of least resistance. So what we'll do is raise this up. And I think about 7.5 meters will clear us over the highway. And that'll give us a 5% grade from there. And on the other side, we'll do something very similar. But since we're going over here anyway, I think we'll go straight for just a moment and then turn around at this higher elevation. I wanna to try to make the creation of the intersection as easy as possible since it's brand new. There's no reason to, tr to make this any more complicated than it has to be. Now I'd love to create the interchange, but I don't have highways unlocked. So we are going to need to go into our development tree and purchase highways 
for two development points. So we've used all of them at this point. And then we'll start with the two lane highway. And I am gonna draw a straight line first. And I'm taking this up about 72 meters. And then we'll go into our continuous tool. And here's where the magic happens. We'll come up about 50 meters. I'm, I'm measuring back and forth. And you can see this is about 100. So we'll go up 52 or so meters. Then I'll click once and then watch this. A perfect half circle I've completely connected in. So that's what the continuous tool can allow you to do. And this may have seemed complicated, but I wanted this side to mirror this side. So I measured to see how far this road was from the turn and it was 88 meters. So I added a node here. Now I can get rid of this road and this road, the whole purpose was to get 100 meters away from the highway because now I can just use that continuous tool once again, go up approximately 52 meters, click once and loop right back in. Now we've got to work on our lane math here. So we're going to click on the three lane road because we want to add a turning lane. And I'm going to upgrade this using the replace tool. And then we'll go into our one lane highway. And I'm going to use the curved road tool, the simple curve. Select this lane right here after we upgrade this to again have three lanes. And then we'll pull this right up to that third lane. Click once and then turn this in. And now we've got a nice merge lane. And I'll take this down right here to get rid of that extra lane. And then we'll take this and convert this to be a one lane road. And they'll come together at this two lane segment. This is backwards, but we have a replace tool. So all we have to do is click on this and drag it in the direction that we want it to go. And that is looking absolutely stunningly beautiful. I love that so much. We'll do the exact same thing over here. The very last thing that we wanna do is look at our merge segments and see if they are the, the appropriate length. I think that this is probably a little bit too long, so I'm going to add a node temporarily so that I can downgrade this segment and then get rid of that segment right there. So just like in City Skylines, you can add nodes. Now that we have this, we need to find our way down to the future location of our geothermal power plant. And I just want to see, I just want to dry fit this in to see how big of a pad we need for this. And holy cow, <laughs> this is really big. And it also says that we're in the water, but I can tell that we are likely going to bump into our city limit. So I'm going to purchase two more tiles. Really, this is probably the only one I need. I'll purchase this one tile and then we'll come right back down. And I think that we're going to need to try to make sure that we are above. You can see there's a little bit of water on the ground here. We'll need to go at least a meter, maybe two above that. And we'll level the terrain from there. I don't generally like to make the terrain respect me, but in this particular instance, this is a regional power plant. I think that if there ever were a place to make the terrain respect you, this is probably it. So I think I can get away with one right here up oh, and that has unlocked the Grand Village milestone. Let's take a look at what we get. We get a million dollars, so that'll fix our budget. We also get four development points and six expansion permits, so that is very helpful. But we also unlock a ton of stuff. Grand Village is a huge milestone to reach. You get the district creation tool, your production panel, so you can understand your supply chains. You get policies, natural disasters, public transportation, low rent housing offices, you get a couple of specialized industries, including grain farming and forestry. In public transit, you get the buses and the taxis along with dedicated bus lanes. You finally unlock parks, including our favorite, the dog park. And you get all of your pre-order bonuses if you pre-ordered and the taxi minimum fare policy. So a lot of good stuff here. We're likely going to use a number of things in here. But for now, we'll just exit out of here and continue with what we were up to. And it does look like everything worked out here for us, thankfully. So all we have to do is fix things up, grade around this a bit, and make it look a little bit more planned. And the trick here is going to be to take the edge of our softened terrain tool and not get too close to our power plant. And now we'll just need to get our road over here. So I think we'll go with one of our medium roads. We'll take that down to ground height again. And then the most important thing for us is going to be to make sure that snap the sides of buildings is on. We do have that on. So we'll attach that right here. And I will be honest with you and say that I don't think that this is the road that we're going to go with. I probably should have taken this down. Let's do it. We'll take this down a notch. We use a two lane highway and we'll just replace this quickly along the side of our power facility. This means that we will need to run some lights on our highway, but truthfully, I think it makes a ton more sense to do this anyway. And then we'll use our continuous road tool to make our connection over here and likely adjust this road going across the highway as well. 
And I thought about curving this in here directly, but I think that we're gonna do something more substantial over here. So we'll add a roundabout and terminate this road right here for the time being. And then I am going to upgrade this or downgrade this, depending on how you're looking at it, to turn this into a highway, once again, turning off our cell length. And then it's just as easy as upgrading right along here. I'm curious as to whether or not I should really even be changing it on the bridge side. I may just leave this and perhaps turn this into a three lane road right here. And then we'll reverse the direction so that we have a dedicated turn lane onto the highway from here. Yeah, I'm definitely thinking that this is a good solution for us. So now we need to go into our road services menu and add lighting to these highway segments. And interestingly, it looks like the bridge already has lighting, so we don't need to worry about that one. And actually it was just that I did not have the correct road there. I had a normal two lane road. So gotta be very careful with these. They can be difficult to discern from one another. And now I'm just holding down our, our upgrade tool, our replace tool, and pulling it all the way down. And the power plant didn't seem to like being placed on this road, so I have upgraded that. And then I don't love the way that this is joining up, so I'm gonna turn off all the snapping and just pull this over myself. Perfect. I love that so much about the replace tool that it's so easy just to shift things over just a little bit. So this is connected with power, which is really all that we need if we want to uh, get this connected into our grid. I do want to just investigate this a little bit, though. It's only generating 15 megawatts of electricity. And that's all about the number of employees that it has. So we'll definitely need to keep an eye on that. In the meantime, I do want to think more about our outside connections and we need to get water to the outside world as well. We talked a little bit about that earlier. And I'm thinking that this side of the map is likely our closest connection to the outside world. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight tiles to get to the outside world. Over here, eight as well. So I guess it doesn't really matter either way. I think we'll just go with it over here and we can add an outside road connection as well. So now that we have those purchased, I'm going to continue our highway out and then we'll place our water pipes underneath the road right where it belongs. And just by connecting to the outside world over here, we've made another roadway connection. And you can tell because we have this little arrow right here. And while we're at it, we're just going to add this water pipe right here as well. I'm gonna hit the I button so I can see what I'm doing. And then we should be able to just basically snap onto the road and then click along it. You can already see we've got cars underneath here, which is absolutely outstanding. And with that, we should be connected to the outside world, but it's always helpful to double check. So we'll just take a look at our water and sewage menu and see if we are exporting. And we are exporting, looks like 73,000 cubic meters of water per month. Now I do wanna see what this is doing for us, and it's $925 a month. <laughs> well, I guess that is one tenth the cost of all of our water. Okay, okay, now it's much better. Almost $4,000 a month. What a good deal for us. The not so great deal is our electricity. I think this still comes down to the fact that our power plant, yeah, it just doesn't have any employees right now. So we're gonna need to wait and grow our city to get some workers at this plant. The other concern that I have is it's telling me that a power line is not connected. And I'm thinking that we should just be a bit proactive about this and maybe try to connect up with the outside world over here, just like we did with our water pipes. And for this, I decided to go underground. Is that the most realistic? No, probably not. But there's such a beautiful forest here and the fall colors just made me want to preserve it. So <laughs> sometimes you've just got to do things that make you happy. And at least this thing is now happy as well. Now this hasn't changed our situation with production, still the worker issue, but we'll work our way through that. I do want to return to our power plant and water plant at some point in the future to see if things have stabilized, but for now I think it's incredibly evident that we must level up and grow the city. In City Skylines 2, leveling your buildings is all about ensuring that businesses and citizens have enough excess revenue to reinvest in their properties. And this is something that you absolutely want to pursue for a number of reasons. 
For residential properties, higher level buildings will consume fewer utilities, which will save you money. For commercial properties, higher level buildings will consume less utilities and produce goods and services faster, which allows them to sell those goods and services at a cheaper rate to customers, which saves them money and allows them to reinvest into their homes. And for industrial and office properties, higher level buildings will use fewer utilities, produce goods faster, and generate less garbage and pollution due to their efficiency. And all of this will play into your tax collections. So let's talk about how those work. Tax collections for residential properties are based upon a citizen's monthly wages. And for commercial, industrial, and office properties, it's based upon the monthly profits of those companies. So when more of your citizens have jobs and companies have higher profits, your tax collections will go up. So everything is related. If you want to gain a better understanding of the level of all the buildings in your community, pop up to your info views and click on the building level info view. This will give you this visual representation of all of the building levels in your community with the buildings that are showing up in red being the lowest level and the buildings in green, of which we have none, being at the highest level. Now, if we look over here at the pie charts, you can see that most of our buildings are level one and two. And this is important to recognize because you only see those benefits I was just talking about for buildings that are level three through five. So the only level three buildings we have are a couple of residential buildings, probably these ones right about here, yes. So these are the only buildings receiving some of those enhanced benefits. So let's talk about what we can do to level up our community. We'll start out with our businesses, and for businesses, it really comes down to a couple of things. The most important is having employees. So right here, we have this lack of labor icon on this business. You can see because they are not fully staffed, they're only operating at 85% efficiency, losing 25% of their total efficiency. So that is something that we absolutely need to resolve as quickly as possible. The other things that we could do to increase their profitability would be to give them their raw materials that they use to create their product and have them produced locally. So right now they're importing all of their vegetables that's more expensive than producing them locally. So that is something that we could certainly resolve. I'm reluctant to add any extractors right now though because they will compete with this business for labor. So that is certainly something to be aware of. The other things that will improve their profitability would be uh, increasing their efficiency by adding post offices and adding the internet, which will help them sell more goods. Unfortunately, we can't do either of those right now because those unlock at milestone five. Now for our residential properties, the things that will make them level up are increasing their transportation options. So having mass transit that will reduce their transportation costs and leave them with more money at the end of the month to improve their homes, giving them alternative options for leisure. Right now, for instance, we don't have any parks. So the only leisure buildings, which we could actually check out, pop into your info views and click on leisure. The only options that we have right now are gonna be commercial buildings. We have what appears to be a bar, a restaurant, and some sort of recreation company. So those are the only options in town and they're gonna cost money. So if we add some parks, that will make it easier for them to level up as well. And then finally, providing higher education, which will allow them to get jobs that pay a little bit better. But right now, we need to focus on our budget, which means that we are going to try to expand our city without spending much money. So we are going to rapidly grow this will help our businesses. It will also expand our tax base. And then eventually we'll start to unlock some of those more advanced options as we reach milestone five. So we'll do two things to start. I'm going to basically add a whole bunch of single family zoning right here, and then I'll increase the density in our core. And while those are filling in, let's hit the I button so we can pop out. And I'm gonna start adding a whole bunch of row homes down here. And I'm gonna skip the sides for now. I'm gonna pause this. And the reason why I'm skipping the sides is I wanna make sure all the row homes zone in in the same direction. And I'm deleting the buildings so that they all zone in at the same depth. Row homes are basically the only building that I will do this for because they look pretty terrible if they're not all facing in the right direction. And look at this. I inadvertently zoned too far in the center. And the exact thing I was talking about is occurring. The row homes are zoning in on Pearl Street. That's not the right street. And then over here, I want to focus on increasing our density. So in some of these places where we have struggling businesses, I'm going to eliminate the business just so I can see the footprint. And then I'm gonna go one by one and add a bit more density. This will help the existing businesses and will also clear out some of the competition that we currently have in this area. Now, a big thing to keep in mind is the bigger the footprint that you have for your building, the taller the building will be. I don't want a bunch of super tall buildings, so we will try to focus on this. We'll even dezone this temporarily and maybe add in some individual lots. And a good representation of this right here is how tall this building is. 
I don't know that that is the height of a building that we necessarily want right now. So I will dezone this. And that is considerably smaller and I'm much happier with that. Now let's expand out this way and add some zoning down here as well. And I do wanna have a focus on the future. And I know that we wanna have a university at some point. So we're likely going to reserve a space for that. I'm going to turn off my snap to guidelines and ensure that the contours are on. And then we'll grid out just a couple of things. So I've added a few blocks up here and I wanna round the bend here and then we'll develop a little bit behind the forest. So I'm gonna use the continuous road tool here. Now in this area, I think that we're gonna place our university right about here. I'm going to reserve a couple of blocks for office type uses that would be supported by the university, but we will have a lot of residential down here, including some medium density and some low rent housing. So we've got this area filled in. I have left a couple of blocks without zoning because we do need to add leisure into this area. So we'll focus on that in a moment, but let's send a block up this way. And I think we'll follow the coast. So we'll once again, reorient our grid, but still use our same grid pattern. And this will be about where we end this, maybe one more block. We will have to terraform. And I did a bit of that over here, but you can see there are still some lumpies and bumpies and you just can't be afraid to redo things when it's necessary. So let's just pop into our continuous road tool and finish this area off. We'll basically have this street right here being the major collector in the area. And I wanna respect the topography as we work our way through here. So we're just gonna follow our major contour lines. And maybe we're going to create our own topography to respect a little bit right here. We've got this fairly steep beach, and I think that we might fill this in and make some sort of park space in this area. So I want to pull a road straight back right here. We'll use our curved road tool to make a connection, and then we'll landscape. And I think that the park will end right about here. So I'll right mouse click the intersection and pull right next to it. And then we'll do the exact same thing on this end. And this should be the higher height, so we'll use our slope terrain tool. Right mouse click here, and then pull right up. This is where our road will go. So that is some uh, pretty unrealistic terrain work, but it's a game. We're going to have some fun. Now, I've got to fix this up, and we even had some key walling occur because we didn't clean this up completely. So we'll just get rid of that one segment, and then we should be able to soften the terrain through here as long as we have a large enough brush size and completely fix this up. That is looking pretty darn good. So with this, I think that we could complete this area basically by adding some cul-de-sac streets. So we're gonna go into our roads menu, add in some alleys, and use our continuous road tool for this. And I basically just wanna add zoning where it doesn't exist. You can already see that for the most part over here, we're in a good place. Maybe we'll add one or two. Nothing all that much. Now, before I add anything on the other side of the road, I wanted to find where this park is going to end. And I think that we'll basically use this road as the ending for our park. We're gonna make this look a little bit more organic too by following the contour lines. And then on this side, we'll send a couple of cul-de-sacs back into the woods. As you can imagine, this is probably going to be eventually one of the most desirable areas in this community, likely a place where maybe university professors live or something like that. Now, cul-de-sacs aren't really a thing in this game, but we can try to mirror the look by adding a roundabout at the end. You won't see homes come in at the end of the roundabout. I do hope at some point in the future we see some sort of mod or uh, some vanilla functionality added. We are still suffering with our demand. I'm really reluctant add any industrial even though the community is begging for it because we still just don't have the workforce base to support it if you ever want to understand the way your workforce looks a little bit and the, the amount of employees that you might need pop into your info views and then click on workplace availability and you can see we are actually starting to get closer to where we need to be but there's still a significant gap 
in between the number of employees and workspaces. We're closing it. There's about 100 remaining. But once we cross that threshold, we start to have a few unemployed uh, citizens. That's when I'll start to think about adding some industrial once again. And we've really closed up the gap for our money, which is really a testament to how much we needed to add a bunch of residential to this community. Now for just a moment, I wanna focus on this area because you can see that I was trying to focus the zoning along these lanes right here, like Garnett Lane, but instead we have it on Kent Street. Kent Street is a collector. That's not where I wanna focus the zoning. So I'm gonna use the paths to attempt to clean this up. I'm gonna turn all the snapping off and then just run a temporary path. We're gonna delete this, but I wanna reorient our zoning. We'll do the exact same thing over here. And then we will add in this zoning. And then most of the time, you can delete these paths basically right after, and the zoning will remain focused on those roads that you were intending to focus the zoning on. Now, if you want a foolproof method, just allow a building to spawn in before you delete the path, and then it will remain in the correct place. So that's a bit of a hacky solution for not having a zoning toggle, but for the most part, I do think it works out okay for us. Now, I do want to add some of those leisure options that I was talking about now that we've unlocked parks. So we are going to christen our city with a dog park because that is everyone's favorite park. And I think that we will add one right to this new neighborhood that we are building. And then I want to also add a small park and a plaza and we'll add a playground nearby. Now, this doesn't look like much of a park. It looks pretty terrible, but we can fix this up. So we are going to relocate these and I'm gonna hit the I button so I can see what I'm doing. And then we'll turn off our snap twos. And there's a couple of tricks that I figured out that you may or may not like. We'll, we'll have to see. You have to let me know down in the comments. I'm gonna pull this out as far as I can. And you can tell when it's too far because the road icon will show up and it'll say road required. So I'll get this just far enough back. We'll do the exact same thing with these parks. And now I wanna add our own paths to these parks. So we're gonna go into our landscaping menu and click on the pavement path. And you might think, why? We've already got paths right there. I think we can do some special things. I wanna turn on snapping to the sides of the building and the 90 degree angle. And we're gonna basically take out the paths that are already in existence there. So this is a little bit of a hacky workaround once again, but I've connected those two paths. Then I'll delete this and it'll push that path back into the park. And now I'm gonna start in the center and pull it off to the side. And as long as I go beyond that, we lose the paths that are connecting to the road, which means that I can place my own. Now this is gonna be painful to do. We've got all of these old trees through here, so they're a bit bigger, but they're kind of just strewn about and I want this to be a well manicured park. So we will get rid of all of these. And just because we don't have park life doesn't mean you shouldn't create parks and try to do something interesting. Very happy with that. Over here, we're gonna do something else. We're going to add in one of our campfire sites. Since we're out in the woods, this seems like the perfect spot for it. So we'll place that right about here. And then we will add in some paths through here to make this a bit of a running complex or something of that nature. And for this, we'll use our continuous road tool. And I'm gonna to try to not take out trees as much as I can. You can tell if you're about to because the tree will have that glowing gray orb around it. Maybe orbs the wrong, it's an outline, more of an outline. So we'll add that. We'll just try to be cognizant of how many trees that were taken out. Now, even if you go over this one time and you, you back yourself out, the tree will have lost all of its growth. So that's another reason why I want to minimize our tree casualties through here. And this would be a really special amenity in this area and a reason that folks want to move to this area. So I'm really pleased with the way that this is turning out. And before we move on, let's just take a moment to look at what we actually built. And we built this little campfire site and it's a really attractive asset. I love that you can walk in, pick up some firewood, take it back here and have a picnic and uh, even cook a meal. Very, very nice. Very cool asset. Now let's add a few more parks throughout the area once again. And for this, I just want to add small parks all over the place. The thought being that every kid should have the ability to walk to a park. It's really formative, at least it was for me. And I'm a, a firm believer that every kid should be able to walk to some sort of a small playground of that nature. 
So we will use eminent domain for some of this. I wouldn't call that the height of realism, but it is what we have to do right now. And sometimes you've just got to work with the game mechanics uh, or be a little bit more cautious about preserving land or park spaces, which I wasn't necessarily in this area. So we won't uh, penalize ourselves too much in this instance, but it is something that in the future we probably should be a little bit better about. Now, here's an interesting instance. I want to add in a plaza on Briar Rose Street right near our fire station and you can see that it's just not having it so what i'm going to do is turn off the snapping and once again just do this myself and just like that we've reached milestone five tiny town this is a milestone i've really been looking forward to because we unlock a ton of stuff including mixed housing vegetable farming coal mining communication services so now we can actually have post offices and the internet we also get a number of city policies as well so the most important things here in my mind are gonna be our mixed use housing and our communications. And we're gonna focus on the internet right away. The post office is actually surprisingly expensive. So we're only going to place that once we can afford to do so with our budget. So let's start thinking about the internet that's going to help us out quite a bit. And we are going to speed this up once again. So the internet can be found underneath communications and then telecom. Now, off the bat, you have a radio mast, which provides a little bit of network capacity and a little bit of range. But if you look at the upkeep, this is 5,000 per month. The server farm, which would be the next thing they could serve your community, is 10 times that. And when you look at the telecom tower, it's basically 19 times that. Uh, so you're getting the extra network capacity. You only have to place one, but it's probably not worth it from a financial standpoint. And we actually do need to place this now. Unreliable internet service is a problem. It will continue to be a problem. It will grow. And I get it. I wouldn't want to move a new community without the internet. So why would we uh, expect our citizens to do the same? So let's place this in a relatively centralized area. We've preserved some right of way right here. Not the most beautiful thing in the world. And this does create noise. So we may want to rezone some of this in the future. And I'm actually thinking that Highland Street will eventually be where we place our post office. So we're gonna say that the postal service has purchased this land and used eminent domain on these homes. And we will reserve this for future postal service uses. Editor Phil here, and I want to talk a little bit more about this radio mast. You have the ability to make a few upgrades to this if you want to. They're relatively inexpensive. You can increase the bandwidth. This will cost you an extra $3,000 per month and give you another 1,500 gigabits of total transfer capacity. You could also increase the range. This is 1,500 per month. It increases the range by 250 meters. And we should take a look at what that actually does for us. So if our single tower provides this much range, if we add our upgrade, it extends it a bit further out. So this isn't something that I'm adding right now. We're gonna add more towers but I just wanted to make you aware that you do have this option available to you. So you still likely need to place more than one tower to begin with, but as your capacity begins to degrade, as your city increases in size, this is another way that you can handle increasing your range and capacity. Okay, back to it. But that wasn't enough. If we take a look at our internet service, we can see that it is great in the core, but this part of our community is basically unserved as is our future university area. So we'll place another telecom tower off Birch Street. And I think what we'll do is actually back this away from roads just a little bit. So we'll tuck it back here and then we'll provide a small connection to this. Let's even provide that off from our local roads. And then we're likely to need one more. Like I mentioned right about here, we'll just place this one on the corner and not worry too much about it. These are probably temporary. We're probably going to replace these with something better in the future, but for the time being, it's going to be just fine. We could probably use one more over an industrial district as well if we wanted to increase their profits now that I think about it. We don't have a large enough district here for me to be able to justify it, and I think I want to add another industrial district across the highway. And we're honestly at a point where I think we have to do this right now. It's the only thing that the city is demanding. And if we don't meet this need right now, our city growth will stop. So even though I want to do other things, sometimes you've just got to listen to the demand meter. So we're going to buy a tile or two. And not much in terms of natural resources here, but we should always double check. Yeah, it's basically lumber and that's it. I just want to make sure that I'm not purchasing fertile ground and putting general industrial on top of that. So we can definitely purchase these. And then let's set up our little industrial district. And I know that this is very hilly terrain right here, but we can work around that. We'll start 
by using our parallel road tool for the first time. I'm gonna add a two lane local road along the side of the highway. I wanna have maybe a five offset. And what this will do is give us a bit of separation in between the highway and this local road. And then what we're gonna do is just go down the highway and click on this road. You gotta be careful. If you see a road forming on the highway, it will indeed convert the highway. So you're gonna to wanna to be aware of that. But either way, it can give you a start and then you can modify it from there. And this should do the trick for us. It's obviously very challenging terrain, so we're likely going to need to make building pads for each of these sites, but I'm not gonna be overly concerned about that. So we're just going to send a road up here. This is maximum terrain disrespect. We'll real rectify it right here, right mouse click at the top height, pull this on over. We'll do the exact same thing down here. And I left a bit of separation in between the two of these, so I could basically come through with our softened terrain tool at the end and smooth this out to make it look like we've actually planned building sites right here. That happens all the time in reality, so we should absolutely do it in the game if we want these sites to look any good. And then we'll zone here right away. And I was thinking of grading in the middle first, but I'm reluctant to do so because our building pads are going to completely change things. So sometimes you've got to do a bit of grading after the fact. So we're gonna let this occur, this zoning occur and fill in, and we're gonna need to resolve the water issue. You'll, you'll notice this when you add water pipes, you'll often get really close, but not quite there. Yeah, we're right there, but not there. <laughs> so we'll just make that easy connection. Oh, and that was just a water pipe. And now this should fill in nicely. Oh, um, there we go. That is exactly what I was trying to do with the landscaping. You can see because we provided this space, you can make this work. Building on hills is not impossible. It just requires more work. So I, I highly recommend you give it a try. The new landscaping tools, in my mind, make it much easier to do this. All that said, I want to know your experience. I've seen some polarizing takes on the new landscaping tool. Some people love them. Some people hate them. I'm kind of of the mindset that they're really good. <laughs> so what do you think? Let me know down in the comments. And ultimately, you don't really build in contour mode. So you can see right here that there, this feels pretty natural. Now, it's not the most attractive thing in the world, but it is exactly what we need. Now, I do want to double check our employment right now just to see how, how we're doing. And we still have more workplaces than employees. I want to continue to increase the density in the downtown area. We'll meet some of that medium density residential demand along with our commercial demand by adding some of our first mixed use in our downtown core. So we're gonna rezone and this is in our residential districts. We have our North American mixed housing. So you can tell that this is mixed because it's blue on the bottom. And what we'll do is just grab a couple of these buildings that are chirping about being unhappy. We'll. Uh, Wish them good tidings as we completely eliminate their businesses. <laughs> I'm going in with some smaller zoning areas once again, so I get some smaller building options. And we can even pepper in a couple of offices in this area and really mix things up. I highly encourage that. Let's add in a plaza in this area as well. And I've gone ahead and basically completely changed the composition of these few blocks right here. And then along the side of the row homes, I am going to complete our zoning so that we eventually have row homes spawning on the side. Thankfully in City Skylines too, there are no one by one buildings, so we don't see any crazy stuff spawning here. We can just wait for the correct buildings to come in. And now that we have a whole bunch of residential zoned in, I do want to add a couple of those specialized industries to attempt to make our businesses more profitable. We'll also provide some more jobs for folks. And I think that we can place one of those over here and another one right here. I wanna add a forestry industry. It's a very low polluting industry and it would seem to make sense in this little forest right here. So we'll go into our roads and I'm gonna use a gravel road. I'm just trying to get this deep into this forest. Now our specialized industries are found underneath zones and then specialized industry and we have our forestry right here. I want to place this at the end of the road so I'm gonna hit the I button so I can see what, I can, what I'm doing and then I will turn off the snapping. And now you can see where the road needs to go. I'll just place this right here. It's gonna start you out on the right-hand side with your area tool. Once again, I'm gonna hit I so I can see what I'm doing. And then I like to turn off my snap twos except for snap to the sides of the road. 
If you like 90s, that's one that you can do as well. And I'll probably turn it on in a couple of spots like this. But for the most part, I just kind of want to go along the sides of the road and snap to it and click, click, click very rapidly. Now here's an interesting one. So we've got our power lines right here. And it may seem absolutely impossible to build around these because if you were to keep this inside of your district, it'll eventually say that you can't close your district. But there is a way around this. You just need to build your district around the power lines. And then you can even come and close it back up and it'll still work. Now we've closed this little district up and I, you can clean up your area tool if you want after the fact. I had a minor error right there, so I was able to fix that up. Now I wanna show you why I was so reluctant to build the specialized industries. If you click on this, it's 39 employees and it's mostly uneducated employees, which is what I needed for my industrial. So that I knew that if I built this, I was going to potentially run into some problems with my industrial employment. Thankfully, we have enough employees at this point for all of our businesses, so we're in a pretty good spot there. I'm gonna add one more specialized industry right over here. We're gonna add a stone mining industry, and it doesn't really matter where you place this, it can work anywhere. And it also has a relatively large range that it can work in. So what I think we'll do is place this a ways off from our little highway over here. And then I'll build this out. We're gonna do something interesting here though. So I'm gonna turn on my 90 so I can go along the side of the building. And then I wanna follow the road, but I don't wanna to snap to the road. I'm gonna leave a little bit of separation. When we detail, I'm going to put some trees in a row along the side of this. And this would be something to basically hide the visual impacts of this as best we can anyway. Obviously, there's going to be a big extractor in the middle and that is not super des desirable to look at, but we'll do what we can. And then let's add one road in here from the highway. And then we will likely once again need to add in our water pipes to connect this up. And now that we have this built, there's one more thing that I want to build and it'll be really apparent why we need to do so in just a moment. We look at our workplace availability. We are lacking well-educated employees. Well-educated employees are employees that have gone to college. So I, would, I do want to add that into the space that we reserved right over here. So we are going to need to unlock our college. So we'll go into our progression menu, development tree, education, and use one point on the college. And the college is very expensive. So we are likely going to need to adjust our tax rates to make this possible, though we are really closing that gap up. We are almost in the green. We're going to put ourselves back in the red momentarily. So I'm gonna place our college right here. And then I wanna find a way to make this look a little bit better. So I think once again, we will use our alleys. And I'm snapping to the grid and trying to build a little bit of a circulation pattern here. And now we can rotate this building around and it'll be focused right on the building. So we had it on Middle Street and now we turned it around to Robin Lane. And just to see the damage, this has once again put us in the red by about $3,000. But I'm not gonna worry about that because this is completely fixable by adjusting our taxes. Now getting our budget in check should be fairly simple at this point in time. We just need to adjust our tax rates. And in City Skylines 2, you can increase your tax rates beyond what you might deem to be acceptable if you've ever played City Skylines 1. So you could micro target these if you want. For residential, it's by income level. So you could incentivize certain folks to move to your community and maybe disincentivize others. For commercial, industrial, and office, you can break it down by basically the type of industry that you want to have in your community. So if you want to really boost up one aspect of your economy, you could do that through here. Right now, I don't want to micro target things. I want to just make enough money to not see this little red arrow. So what we're going to do is boost this up and I'm going to try 15% across the board. This will depress our demand. So if I really wanted to stop all of this crazy industrial demand right now, I could crank this up to maybe 17. They'll be very unhappy about it, don't get me wrong, but they won't abandon the city. They will just complain, which is acceptable in my mind. You can see we're getting very close, 1,300. I'll boost these up to 16 here. And if we wanted to really, really dive into the nitty gritty, we could go into our services menu and attempt to adjust things in here. And look at this, we're actually making money from our electricity. That is exactly why I wanted to build this up. We could also come through here and just reduce some of the budgets of things that we know 
are potentially a bit too much. So for education, for instance, education, when you reduce your service budget, it doesn't work the same way as it did in City Skylines 1. So rather than decreasing your seat capacity, it'll actually reduce the chance of graduation. We could bump this down a little bit and say that 25% oh, is good enough for us. That'll get us into the green. I'm not super interested in that. So we're going to let this go because look at that. We've already almost reached our equilibrium. So we're going to let this go for just one moment to see if things fill in in this area and see when our budget finally crosses the green threshold naturally. And honestly, in real time, that was about a minute. So that wasn't all that bad. We are in a very good place. The last thing that I want to do today is spend a little bit of time on detailing. And this isn't gonna be anything extreme, but I do think that ever after every single build, you should kind of take a look around and see if there's anything that you could do around the edges to improve things. Another reason why we're doing this is we have a whole bunch of property that's been zoned that hasn't spawned in yet. And sometimes you just have to let the simulation run. So while we're doing that, we might as well improve the aesthetic of the city as well. So I'd highly encourage you to do this. With just a little bit of landscaping, we've added a bit more texture to this area and made it feel like more of a complete park. This is really going to look good once it is a bit older, but for the time being, you can kind of see what we've tried to do. Bushes through here, some alders, and then some pines. Nothing all of that crazy. And then through here, I mentioned in the previous episode wanting to make this kind of a more formalized park space. Uh, for this, it's going to be as simple as adding a couple of paths through here. So we'll have our contour view on and basically none of our snap twos will go with a continuous road tool. We'll just come through here and create some interesting spaces. Now I extended this path along the coast, but there's one thing I'm noticing. We don't have any of the trees that we had over here. We have the bushes, but not the trees. But if you want to figure out what you had, you can just click on the tree and it'll show you what it is. Linden, Alder, you can even rename it if you want. But I know exactly what I need to place there. And that's what I wanted to figure out. And now, even though we're really close on our budget, I think we're essentially frozen until we respond to our demand meter. And I can tell that because two categories are peaking. The demand doesn't look healthy. So essentially, if we don't zone some commercial and industrial, our city and our budget are stuck like this forever. So for commercial, for instance, we've got a parcel right here that is completely ready to be filled in. And look at that. Immediately, we get some commercial. Well, we'll do the exact same thing here along King Street. We'll even call a mulligan on this house right here. Sorry, friend. <laughs> and then we have a bit of industrial demand as well. And though we could place this over here, eh, no, we'll, we'll place it over here. We'll inc increase the size of this district just a little bit. Now I have my fingers crossed that we don't create too much air pollution here, uh, but part of leveling up the buildings, like I mentioned earlier, is that they're gonna produce less air pollution. So now that we're starting to meet some of these needs, and trying to level these up, hopefully that puts us in a place where the air pollution isn't a significant concern. That said, something we definitely need to keep our eyes on. And with everything seemingly at an equilibrium, we're gonna let this run for a few minutes and see when our budget completely normalizes. And just like that, after about a minute in real time, we have crossed the threshold and once again have a positive budget. Now that we're finally there, I think that we have one more thing left to do, and that's take inventory of what we've done and have a brief city tour.
So when you reach this point, your city is going to be in an interesting financial spot. We're kind of at an equilibrium, which means that our government subsidy is going to start declining. We're also at a point where our city is growing, so the amount that we have for our service trade is also going to start to decline. I think it's also worth mentioning that our demand meter is back in line with where we would expect it. There's demand across three of the major categories. We're still missing demand for offices, but that's fine. So with this, I think that this is where we're going to leave it today. And I really hope that you've enjoyed this episode. If you did, please hit the like button. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. And I want to thank you so much for your time today. There's a million things that you could have been doing and decided to hang out with me. And I greatly appreciate that. Thank you so much. And I will see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.